in new booth. That's a graph. By the way, this is all these charts and graphs are in our February issue if anybody's interested. Um, that's just how it looks graphically presented. And here's historically how it goes. As you can see, uh, some spending habits. We're, we're down. Sewer is down. You know, had peaked out in about 2006, and since then we've been going down. Uh, sewer rehab has, has held its own and, and, and climbing. And water is, you know, though it's down a little bit this year, you know, the rehab's up a little bit. It's, it's a good market and will be much better. Let's go beyond the figures just a little bit. Uh, city councils are reluctant to raise rates. I think that's a given. Uh, cities are still dragging their feet in that, in that aspect of it. And that's a sore point for many of the municipal managers. They don't like the fact that we're not raising our user fees. You know, just the money we use just to maintain, just to operate our system. We don't raise rates just to keep up with inflation. Because politically, it's not a good thing. Many times, that's the answer. Um, hopefully, that will get better. The national average between rate hikes is 3.4 years. An average city will go almost three and a half years before they raise a water or sewer rate. Now, sometimes they don't need to raise them for that long. Most of the time, they should at least raise them for inflation and don't because, hey, I'm a good steward. I'm not raising your rates. Vote for me. You know, let's go build that park where everybody uses and that'll get votes. Houston's another good example of that. Many years ago or in the 90s, Houston has some dedicated storm, stormwater funds or supposedly there was some debate over how that money was supposed to be allocated. Basically, it was uh, supposed to go to the stormwater. Uh, the mayor rated it to improve parks. Um, did, and, and parks needed it, no doubt about it. Did a good job. We had some wonderful parks. We had some heavy floodings, um, included a couple of loss of life, people drowning, um, and uh, we had some really nice parts. Um, so those are the problems that, that, that exist. Um, beyond the figures, pressure is mounting to maintain. That's the good news, and I think that was addressed earlier. There is pressure beginning to come up. We're going we're gonna to work on those systems, and municipal managers really, really they're trying to do what they can to facilitate this on a public way. Um, raising funds through user fees, that is getting some traction. Even at the risk of public backlash, cities are beginning to seriously consider we're going to have to raise our rates to reflect our costs, just to reflect our costs. And 58% uh, of the uh, municipal people reported that their city councils, their mayors, their governments we're considering raising rates this year. Even in a bad economy, they didn't see they had much choice. Well, number one municipal concern, no, no stranger to that or no surprise there, funding. Uh, almost 70% see that there's a gap between what they budget for and what they actually need. Two different figures. You know, you can only work with what the money you're allocated, so, but they need a lot more. Uh, a couple of comments. Yeah. I like this one. Years of system neglect will be tough to catch up. And that's where we're at in this country. Our system has been neglected, neglected, and not neglected. Outside, out of mind. Let's raid that stormwater fund because let's build those parks. We need the parks too. And they're visible. Uh, and then here was an interesting point. Uh, so many people are without jobs that uh, they're, they're not paying their water bills, their sewer bills. And that's kind of put a scrap on a few cities. This came up a couple of times, these types of comments. Even people with no jobs still pay their taxes and utility rates, and our city's way behind in collections this year. Well, that puts an even further strain on the city system. Knee-jerk reaction. Uh, several of the municipalities were saying, we went too far. We didn't need to cut what we cut. We were so scared, we went too far. And uh, one person put, you know, nothing wrong with being cautious and conservative, but I mean, we went overboard. We didn't adjust our budgets to uh, the coordinate, and they froze their budget. But here's an interesting uh, uh, dynamic that came up. Because were, the municipalities were so scared, as were many of us, we all had that trepidation going into 
2009, that uh, even though cities knew they had a certain amount of money coming in from their user fees, uh, their tax base, and they knew they had a certain amount of work needed to be done, so that they worked within very conservative estimates of what their budgets were going to be, and you know, plan accordingly, a few projects here and there. You know, really cut back, really scale back, but they plan a certain number of activities based upon the constant of money that they had. But as they went forward in the year, the Hispanic managers were told by their by their administrations, look, we just don't, we're scared. So I know we really, really are in desperate need. Uh, let's, let's, let's not do that project this year. Let's hold off, let's wait. Let's, let's be ultra conservative. Let's not do it. I think many of you probably wrote, ran into that with the contractors you were working with and engineers where, yeah, they're just dragging their feet on getting this project off the ground there. We don't know if it's going to go this year. That happened a lot. Well, as it turned out, come 2000, the end of, the, of December, most of those cities still had that money they budgeted. It was still sitting there in the bank. But, not going to get suspended. As one person put out, says, yeah, we had, we could have done 20% more work, but we'll never see that money. You know, we won't get it back in 2010. That money's gone forever. It's off in some other program. And uh, as this was very fortuitous, five years behind, we needed, where we needed to be, now we're six years behind. And uh, I think that's very uh, symptomatic of the way the whole year went. Uh, How much funding? Respondents say they need at least 27.5% just to keep up with what they've got right now. Just to maintain. And for the aging infrastructure, it would be difficult to impossible you know, to see enough money to maintain. Trenchless impacts, we all heard of trenchless, we all know. 58% use trenchless of those who haven't. About half plan on doing so in 2010. And of those who haven't used interest, trenchless, about 75% think they will within the next said five years. And uh, about 60% say trenchless has had a moderate to strong impact with, with their activities. <coughs> so, again, just filling it out. How much of the market is trenchless? You know, ranges from uh, 15, 16% for new construction. And not surprisingly, you know, about 70% for rehabilitation work in the sewer and about 30% for water, and that number will increase a lot. So the bottom line is, trenchless is a big part of what we do. Uh, Steve's very active as he grows as are others with restrained joint PVC and things like that that have made it practical, made uh, insulation of PVC very practical in the trenchless market. Uh, I know there's been experiments successful with using it in the pipe bursting format. Um, so there is a role for PVC, obviously, in the trenchless and and, uh, and because it is a part of the pipe of cities, I think that role will continue to grow. They will find ways to utilize it. But trenchless is here to stay, and it's going to be a big part of what we do. Um, let's get that sign because nobody can read it. <laughs> Asset management. Uh, that's been a big buzzword in the last few years. Cities, however, think this year, not, so, not such a big deal because we got a lot of other concerns. 57%. Uh, it's kind of, this number kind of surprised me. Fifty percent of the cities out there, they don't have an asset management plan per se in place. Though thirty-two percent say in the near future we're going to. Uh, and this kind of summed up, I think, how the year has gone. Quite frankly, as important as asset management is, uh, it's low on our list of priorities right now. We got other things to worry about. Uh, and then we ask them. What do you think about uh, uh, what do you think about about contractors? How do you feel about your contractors? Well, we do a rating scale between one and five. One being dismal, five being fabulous. Um, it's rare we find that if you get anything over three, you're probably doing something right, you're doing a good job. Um, so three eight seven is a very good rating, and you know, one person we have excellent relationships. Uh, then another person said, kind of on the cynical side, I think we have contractors who do so good this year because work scarce. They've got to do a good job. You know, they're glad to have their job. And then another one, and this 